Well, good afternoon. Nathan Allen here, and I'm here to discuss uh, groups. Um, I want to start with the first question. It's how would you describe your experience in group work prior to college? Well, as far as group work prior to college, I feel like most of my group work was done in uh, small settings. Um, my background as a grade school, I was actually a homeschool student up until I was about 17 and started taking college classes. So as far as school is concerned, um, many of my groups were small, um, independent groups, people that I knew over time, um, either in biology labs or uh, maybe chemistry labs. And those groups were very tight-knit. Um, we understood each other very well. So my first experience to really interact with other people was in the real world, working in businesses to accomplish goals and working in colleges. With colleges, I found that you are always at the mercy of the procrastinator. That's the, I guess you could say, the downside to groups. It doesn't matter how hard you try, you're always as strong as your weakest link. The person there is that's slow, that's not turning their stuff in in time. It always seems like that's the one. Now, I'm not saying that person wasn't me sometimes, but that is a dynamic that will always be there for groups. Um, the benefit to groups, I found, was that if there was something you didn't understand, then oftentimes the group itself was able to bring you along to pick up speed or momentum to help you understand and in turn absorb your knowledge. So it's a, uh, a living, breathing, learning mass of people. Um, one group that can absorb, lead, but all this comes into play with understanding uh, people's emotions, understanding backgrounds, understanding their cultures. So it takes a, a real deep understanding and respect for somebody and who they are in order to be able to work with them. The second question is about um, the effectiveness you have been as a teacher while working in the classroom. I feel like as a teacher, I promote more, more activities that encourage the students to work together. It encourages them to understand each other and encourages them to work out issues than I do actually covering the material they're learning in the group. The material they're learning will be absorbed, I, I feel, naturally in what they're reading and what they're watching and what they're building. They're gaining the, uh, the understanding, the knowledge for the subject. But as far as the students are concerned, in order for them to be able to function in the group, they have to learn the skills to talk to, to respect, and to work with those people. And I feel like those are the skills that most benefit them. And so I always try to encourage them to resolve their own issues. I will, if there are issues within the group, I will go to the furthest extent to make sure that those students have had every opportunity to continue building their group rather than giving up and just saying they want a different group member or uh, they just want to do it on their own. Because once that's become a habit, those students will want to continually do it on their own. They will continue to find a reason to split away to the group that they enjoy rather than finding the reasons to stick with that group. And that's what I promote, staying with your group no matter what. Number three, what re reservations or recommendations do you have for teachers who desire to use group work in their classroom? Um, let me start out with reservations. Um, I work in a, a all PBL school. So everything we do is project-based and around usually groups of two to five students doing almost every project. And a big reservation is randomizing. Saying, okay, these students haven't worked together, this will be a great experience for them, and not really considering whether you have five students in there in one group who are all um, introverts, who, who have issues speaking out, or looking and randomly getting a group where you have uh, five extroverts that, um, that are constantly talking over each other, constantly wanting to be the person to gain the fame of figuring out the problem, of solving the issue. You have to pick and choose the groups very carefully while giving them an opportunity to work with other people. So it's a, a tedious process. So I would, I would urge teachers that are wanting to build groups 
to never use a random generator to just throw groups together and say, oh, well, let's see how these groups do together. But you really, you have to understand the student first and then understand how their personality would function and then put them in a situation where they can grow from that. Um, recommendations for groups. What I would recommend is a, a building of projects. Start them out with small activities. Uh, we, we all use icebreakers at the beginning of the year, but that should be a, a foundation from where you start. Start out with something small. Maybe they're building something out of connects. Maybe they have a, a pile of toothpicks and um, maybe a, a little candies or something that they're sticking the toothpicks through, say marshmallows, and they have to build a marshmallow tower. This will cause them to work together in a small task. And from there, you build up bigger. You don't want to take them and say, okay, now we've learned everyone's name in a introduction game. Let's throw you into a situation where you're trying to solve world problems and design a house, which has to hold this much weight. And if it snows, it has to hold this much more weight on top of that house and the roof. And then the foundation itself, what is the foundation going to be on? Those are major questions that I, I know a high school student could work out eventually and could work out in a group, but there's no way that you would take them for the first time and throw them into that group and get them going. That's where I feel there's a huge gap um, that we need to fill in between high school and college. I feel like there's a lot of times that students in high school will form relationships and then their groups are, they function well because of that relationship but they haven't been taught the skill to quickly form relationships so that they can trust, work with, listen to, and have valid discussions with college students. So that's the skill that I like to focus on when I'm working with students. Learning not just the skill to um, sit in a group to wait your turn to talk. Those are formalities. Learning to really think about the person next to you and say, are they learning something? Have I learned something from them, and what can I do to be a, a better participant in this group? As teachers, we should be working together in groups, just like we do. We, we promote our students to work in groups, yet we have teachers that work independently of each other, subjects that work independently of each other. We need to work as a group for that common goal of teaching the student, and by reaching that common goal, we can do that through the same skills we teach our students. Um, accepting the importance of everyone around us, accepting the importance of their ideas, of their subject, and accepting the fact that they are a necessity in the total knowledge that we are imparting in the students. The same way in a project, if you're designing a building and one person is designing the roof and one person is designing the walls, um, neither the walls nor the roof is more, are more important than each other. They are, they are equal in their need of the construction without one or without the other, the, it's not a building. And if one or the other is lacking, then the building's integrity is not there. So with that being said, uh, I think that groups are a necessity. They are a very necessary part of our teaching, and they should be a necessary part of the methods that we use for teaching and how we design our educational system from principals to teachers to the students. Thank you.